without further ado, I'd like to welcome Ian Mungle back from his tour of Canada with 70 lectures across the Canadian nation. And he's back in Sedona for his second evening presentation here. And he's got some brilliant information to share with you. So I hope you brought paper or at least recording device or your ears. So lend him your ears and let's give him a warm welcome. studied something about the Mayan calendar already? <coughs> there is half. Okay. So, <clears throat> what we're going to be doing tonight is, uh, I've been doing the same talk, you see, the same basic information of, of discoveries for the last three and a half years. Tonight is a time to change that. I'm going to go into talking about not so much of history, but what is currently going on right now, and what is going to be coming in the future according to the Mayan calendar. For those people who haven't seen all of the basics, we're going to be going through this very, very quickly. And you can get that information from my website or from one of the DVDs or VHS tapes that are out there. But for tonight, we're just going to rip into what I think is more important to everybody. That is, <clears throat> what do we do now? Not what did they do back then, OK? Uh, <clears throat> the whole reason that I got involved in this some years ago was through jewelry. I'm not an archaeologist or any kind of scholar. I'm a jeweler. But I started doing Mayan symbols with my own hands. And those symbols have meanings, very strong meanings, that started to impart themselves onto me. I thought this was very interesting. I looked further into their culture because of that and found out they had a calendar. Uh, some years after I found out about the calendar, about a year and a half, I actually came up with a, a formula to convert the Gregorian calendar to the Mayan calendar, and that's what's in here. Uh, when this information was published, it went to, eventually made it to Sweden, where Dr. Carl Kalman saw what I had done, and he had been doing his own researches on the Mayan calendar for seven years. He had been researching facts that could be proven about the Maya calendar. What he discovered was that there is a, a basic structure to the calendar that's actually written in stone in a place called Koba. And what the, is written in stone is different periods of, or epochs of time. And what Coleman did is he took all that we have found out about our science, from our sciences of what happened when and laid it over this pattern. And voila, what showed up is this general movement of evolution of consciousness, which we're going to just go cursory through this basic information. And then we're going to go on to fresh <laughs> stuff. <coughs> there are nine levels to the Mayan calendar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Where we are right now is in this eighth level. As a matter of fact, we're in the very middle of this eighth level. Each of these sections, or different levels of evolution of consciousness, are divided into equal sections of 13 periods of time. This very first section was 16.4 billion years long. That is from the Big Bang forward. And there was a particular kind of consciousness that was being laid down step by step by step by stage by stage, all the way across. And this basic consciousness was action, reaction. All the physical laws. Uh, I guess everybody here pretty well understands by now that everything is consciousness, right? Yeah. Everything is consciousness. Grass, trees, rocks, this pen. It's all consciousness. And this pen, as a matter of fact, very smart pen. It knows exactly what to do. It has a consciousness which registers what to do. Watch. It followed those laws. That's the level of the pen's consciousness. Action, 
reaction. I mean, we all know that things are conscious. We, we've proven it to ourselves. By going and washing your car, it runs better, doesn't it? <laughs> or it rains. <laughs> or it rains. But things contain consciousness at different levels. Objects have this consciousness of action, reaction. Is that pretty simple? OK. The very next picture on this rock in Koba shows a, pic a time period 820 million years long. So 820 million years ago, a whole other cycle started at number one and started going through this whole process again. This time, building a different kind of consciousness, the consciousness of stimulus response. There's a difference between stimulus response and action reaction, isn't there? The major difference is that there's more consciousness in stimulus response than there is in action reaction. All these laws were laid down. All these steps and stages were taken until way over here, the very last section here, this is when life showed up, the first living cell, 1.26 billion years ago. And ever since then, it has been going through now, instead of just action reaction, we have life animate that starts to organize into higher and higher levels of life. We end up eventually, over here the last 63.4 million years, with mammals. Started out with multicellular organisms that grew into plants and then into mollusks and fishes and insects and birds and all the way through. By the way, in these books is the very detailed information about each one of these steps and stages and how it has all come down on schedule. This is not a random creation. We have free will within it, but we are on a schedule, which is wonderful, as you'll see in a minute. This next stage, 41 million years ago is when it started, and 40 million years ago is when monkeys showed up on this planet. And they were developing a different kind of consciousness, and that is stimulus individual response. Now, down here, life had organized itself into things like nests and swarms and flocks and hives and herds. That's this kind of consciousness, stimulus response. But here, we entered into a whole other kind of consciousness, a familial consciousness. What's the difference between a family and a herd? the recognition of individuals. Now, this is a big difference. Stimulus response, stimulus individual response sounds the same, but it's a huge difference, and you've experienced it. There's times when you felt really good about just being yourself. And then there's other times when you felt like you were part of the herd, like waiting online at some <laughs> big sporting event or stuck in traffic. Check your consciousness levels. When you're feeling good about yourself and when you're stuck in traffic, there is a big difference in consciousness. And that whole thing, this whole level, 41 million years of it, helped us to develop better and better ways to interrelate or intercommunicate. We move up to the tribal cycle, which started 2 million years ago. 2 million years ago was when the first Australopithecus showed up the first tailless ape. 